In the period where I was figuring my thing out in nails, I was undecided as to what e-file bits to commit to. Kind of grew up seeing the paper sanding ban at most salons. And so inevitably, as a newbie nail tech, I started with that. Metal bits freaked me out because the precision I had to have to not cut or burn a client or even avoiding my natural nail with them when doing my own nails was quite stressful. Few times I'd shave just a little chunk off which would lead to a horrible burn when curing my gel nails. We want to keep as many layers of our natural nails as possible, especially when curing gel nails, as our keratin is very important to shielding us from curing heat and nail chemicals. It wasn't until I started seeing clips of these pink ceramic bits that I started to feel safe with my e-filing and that with any material bits that I use. There is a place for every material type of e-file bit. But in today's video, I wanna focus on explaining the difference between carbides and ceramics to help you decide which is best for gel nails. There is actually room for both. Hey there and welcome back and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Paola of paolaponsanails.com, your source for all things premium soft gels and entrepreneurship in the nail industry. If this sounds like a niche you'd like to continue growing in, then at the end of this video, do consider subscribing to this channel and our weekly newsletter. Let's begin. We'll start by comparing both materials, carbide and ceramic, including pros and cons. And at the end, I'll share which I use and teach my students with for the use on soft shells. There is one predominant similarity between both tungsten carbide bits and ceramic bits, and that is that both are similarly durable when under heat and pressure stress. As you can see in this moss hardness scale, which in a gist measures a mineral's resistance to scratching or wear, you can see that tungsten and ceramic are at the top of the scale. For the sake of this video, when I talk about carbides, by the way, I will specifically be referring to tungsten metal carbides unless I note otherwise. Another similarity is that both carbide and ceramic bits can come in different colors. Carbide metal bits will be plated, while ceramics are through and through the same color externally as they are internally. Let's start with carbide. Carbide e-bits are metal. The most popular you will see are titanium and tungsten carbides, with tungsten being significantly stronger or more durable than titanium, which is why I think the industry has made the shift or the push towards tungsten versus titanium. And it seems in my quick research of the materials that because tungsten is more resistant under pressure and heat stress than titanium carbides, tungsten carbide is the material most ideal for removals. Whereas titanium carbides are going to be better for things like finishing enhancements. Now the pros and cons specifically for tungsten carbide and ceramic are actually minor, but I embrace the nail nerd in you and I. So let's look into these minor differences or pros and cons. Pros of using carbide ebits. Pro number one, carbides out of all other materials for ebits will remove product faster. That's just the nature of the carbide material, which is why if you make a boo-boo on the natural nail, it is a significant one, even though you just barely touch the nail. Pro number two, carbide is slightly more durable. Either option though will require replacement around the three month mark, depending on use. Pro number three, carbide is an excellent choice for hard products like acrylic, hard gel, or acro gel products. Because of the nature of the product, as discussed earlier, it shapes product effortlessly. Cons of using carbide Eve bits. Con number one, carbide is more prone to heating than ceramic. Carbides are metals, which are good conductors of energy. In this instance, that energy is in the form of heat. With that being said, both will conduct friction heat while spinning at thousands of RPM, but again, metal will get hotter faster. Keep this in mind as you're working on clients, whatever option you are using, you'll wanna move swiftly through each nail. Con number two, you must work at high RPM, rotations per minute, when using tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide is a hefty, weighty material, and so in order to shave off 
product swiftly and smoothly, it needs a significant amount of speed. And so for removal, it will not be uncommon to use up to the highest speed of your EFL. Only do this if you've gone through a course in e-filing as you may cause serious injury to your nail or nail matrix, which can be permanent. Con number three, carbides can slightly be more expensive. The difference is not significant, but if you are going through your carbides a bit too often and you're only working on soak off products, it may be financially worth it to stick to ceramics. Let's now move on to the pros and cons of ceramic e-file bits. Pros of using ceramic e-bits. Pro number one, ceramic e-bits are also great removal bits because of their hardness as discussed in the moss scale. Pro number two, ceramic e-bits generate less heat. Less heat generated on the nail is a benefit when doing gel nails because this can potentially decrease heat spikes on nails while in the curing unit. An already warm nail bed will only get hotter during the curing process. Ceramic is essentially clay, it's like porcelain, and so it takes a little more time and energy to heat up clay than metal. And also, the finer or more worn down your flutes are, so the teeths of your bits, the more heat can be experienced on the natural nail. So make sure to keep track of your bits, especially when you're using them consistently on clients that they haven't gone too smooth, because you would have passed the time to have changed them out. On yourself, you'll probably need a set of bits once or twice per year on clients like three to five months, depending on use. Pro number three, ceramic allows you to work at variable speeds and still remove product effectively. Ceramic is more lightweight than carbide, so it does not require the same intensity and speed to shave off product. It's more glass-like in a way, very lightweight feel, and that's what allows you to shave products so delicately just about at any speed. This makes ceramic removal bits super beginner friendly, allowing the user to work at a lower RPM while they confidently work their way into a higher RPM, which is kind of like what we all need as newbies. Pro number four, ceramic bits can be used on the natural nail plate. Ceramic bits are commonly used to remove cuticle from off of the nail plate, but even when they accidentally touch the nail plate, the contact is not detrimental as the ceramic delicately shaves down any material, including keratin. Obviously, only fine to medium grits should be used on the natural nail, and that sparingly, a coarse grit ceramic will most definitely remove significant amount of keratin. Cases where you might use a ceramic over the natural nails are nail imperfections or bumpiness or complete product removals. This, however, should only be done after proper training. You can and will thin down your natural nails or someone else's natural nails with improper use. And if you're gonna put gel on those nails, they will hurt. Don't do that. Pro number five, as we already alluded earlier, ceramics are often a few dollars cheaper than your carbides. So if you're not often removing bulk on nails, you can save a few dollars by only sticking to ceramic. Cons of using ceramic ebits. I'd say there are only two, maybe three significant cons to ceramics. Con number one, ceramics are not the ideal material for product removal of acrylic, acro gel, and even hard gel. This is because usually these products apply much thicker than your soak off products. And so to get through that bulk efficiently, it's better to use the heavy duty option, i.e. your tungsten carbide. It would just get you there faster and more smooth. There are coarser grits for ceramics, but not only do the flutes start looking kind of mean, but also in my experience, they don't feel as smooth as a metal carbide at the same grit or even just like a medium grit removing. Con number two, I think it's the biggest. I mean, it's not super, super big. I'll definitely be helping you out with some links in the description box, but ceramics are not easy to find with a lot of distributors. Unfortunately, because there is a bit of education lacking with ceramics, a lot of people, including nail tags and distributors, don't know all of the awesome features of ceramics. So they cater their offerings to the demand for metal bits, because that is what most techs know. But now that you know how cool they are, no pun intended, you can make a request with your distributor to start carrying ceramics. You'll be surprised sometimes they just need to see and hear just enough demand to make the effort to carry them. 
Personally, the pros for using ceramics significantly outweigh the cons for me as a specialized soft gel stylist, um, so that's what I'm gonna use. I often use and teach my students though to use both as specialized soft gel stylists. We use carbide to remove the bulk quickly and then transition to a fine or even extra fine ceramic to flush the product as flat to the natural nail. And because that bit is ceramic, we alleviate any panic of touching the natural nail with the bit. Plus I find that by using both bits, the carbide and the ceramic, carbide first, ceramic next, we kind of decrease wear on our bit because we're letting each do like their maximum capability based on the material that they're made out of. So because we're always just removing bulk with our carbide, that's all our carbide is needed. Once we get through that, then we can move on to our ceramic. And so again, we decrease the wear on them. So again, maybe just me, but I feel like it extends the life of my bits a little bit when I mix both. But you can totally, if you're only doing soft gel, you can totally just be ceramic only. Well, there you have it, carbide versus ceramic. It's just a matter of selecting the right tool for the right job. If you would like further support and learn more about e-filing with me, I'll leave a code for you down in the description box below for you to check out my efficient e-filing masterclass, my step-by-step -step digital course on all of my salon e-filing techniques. Also, we have a special guest in the season of Kogoi's Japanese Shell Certification. You'll have the opportunity to upgrade your enrollment with the queen of e-filing herself, Hilary Dawn Herrera. I'm so excited. Look forward to that if you're going to be joining us in the Kogoi Certification. Get on the waitlist now so that you don't miss any announcements, including early bird enrollment perks. You can find the link down in the description box below, along with my favorite ceramic and carbide bid sources. Feel free to drop any comments below and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.